Hi, this is Pavel from Firebase GenKit team. And in this video, I'd like to talk about some of the new features that were released in the latest version of uh, GenKit version 0.9. I'm going to go over some of the new features, but if you're interested in migrating from the previous version to the, to the latest, there's a migration guide available in the documentation. Please do check it out. One of the new features in uh, in Genkit 0.9, uh, or it's not really new, but it got significantly updated, is prompts. Uh, like here, we have an example here. We're just uh, making a call to an LLM. And here, I'd like to maybe point out that we, we added a feature that you can specify a global model so that when you're calling generate, you don't have to. So you can just pass in the prompt directly. Uh, but, you know, one of the features uh, is like with uh, with prompts is uh, we've uh, combined uh, dot prompt and okay, moved into the core framework, so it is kind of built in. You don't have to you know import it separately anymore. So it is just a kind of a feature of ChenKit now. Yeah, so you can uh, do define prompt and then you can just pass in the template uh, the dot prompt template in here, and you can specify input schema here. Uh, and the nice thing is you can actually just go and invoke the, these prompts as functions. And also here, because it takes in an input, it requires a name. So I'm just going to say, you know, uh, say hi to Pavel. And if I run this, it should say hi. Okay, great. So, uh, and also there's an option for when you're defining prompt is to use, uh, function instead of the string template. So, so basically this is the same thing, uh, as before. And here we're just saying, uh, we're writing a function that will generate the, the messages that we want to send to the LLM. And here, this can be completely dynamic. You see, this is an asynchronous function. So you can make API calls, read from database, do whatever you want to construct the, the actual call to the LLM if you want to. Uh, and, and, and this works the same way. And yeah, in, in addition to kind of, uh, you know, these prompts, we also try to improve multi-turn chat use cases. So, uh, and for that, we have introduced, uh, a chat feature, multi-turn chat feature. And, uh, here, I can just kind of copy paste the, the sample here. So you can create a chat instance. Uh, from, from GenKit. And then, and here we're doing like an, an infinite loop. We're just, uh, getting input from the user from the command line and just, uh, sending that input to the, to the chat session. And we're just printing it out. So, uh, just save this. And if I, if I run this, so we can just say hi. Yeah. I can put up my name. Is... Yeah. And yeah, you see it, it remembers. Uh, so as part of that chat instance, it maintains the, the chat history. Uh, and uh, we don't have to kind of uh, manually maintain it. One other thing is, is you can actually, you can instantiate these chat instances with, with prompts. So like, let's, let's say we have like this preamble prompt that we uh, want to give to the, to our chat. So basically it, it's as easy as just pass it to the chat. And, uh, if we uh, run this again, yeah, so it's, uh, it's going to create that chat with, with this preamble. And, uh, you see it's a, a little friendlier, I guess. But one other thing is, is that you can actually, like these chat sessions can have state. So, and let's just uh, quickly, uh, you know, update this uh, preamble here. And here you're saying you're a helpful agent and the user's name is, and we're using this at state and we're, and we're, you know, rendering the, the state into the preamble. And in order to use, uh, like to initialize that state into the preamble. So instead of just creating chat instance directly, we're actually going to create a session. Uh, and it will initial, uh, set the initial state on that session. Here we're, we're setting this username that's referred in here to, to Pavel. And, uh, and then we're doing the same thing except creating the chat session, uh, chat on the session that we just initialized here. So now this chat will be tied to the session. So, and if, if I just, uh, run this now, I can directly ask, uh, what's my name? And it should be able to tell me. Yeah. So because like it, it is, it is now 
knows from the preamble from the system prompt what is my user context and you can you know imagine applications for this is that they maybe like you have a logged in user and, and you want to maybe provide some all of that information up front to the llm another like interesting thing with uh, with these prompts is that it's not just kind of the your system prompt information like you can actually just also uh, set tools in there as well so for example here we um we're going to create a tool, change username, and this, uh, and in, in, inside this tool here, we can actually ac access the current session. So we can do ai.current session. It'll give you a reference to the current session and you can update the state, uh, from there. And, uh, so we, we're going to pass this tool to this, to this preamble. So we're saying, uh, the tools available in, in this preamble are this. And, uh, and here I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and actually just uh, as we're iterating, I'm, I'm going to print out the state uh, on each iteration so that we can see that it actually changes. So let me just cl clear this and just restart. And I'm going to say hi. And it says hi. And here's it prints out that the, our current state is username equals paddle. I'm going to change username to Chris. And there it, it actually, uh, called the tool to update their username. And now our internal state has changed. So this is very useful if you're interacting with LLM and you want to have like maintain some kind of a state that you're maybe building up over time, visualizing something in, in the, in the UI or, or whatever it may be. So, uh, and, uh, and another interesting thing is that, uh, the tool here, uh, so it can be a tool, but you can also also specify another prompt as a tool. So let me just quickly maybe add an, another prompt here. I'm gonna say, uh, actually I'm gonna uh, replace uh, this preamble prompt. So we have info agent and we have general contractor agent. So, and the uh, info agent just can, you know, provide we're providing a description here, general information and, and administrative tasks, like updating usernames. Uh, but it also has, uh, you know, has general contractor as a tool and a general contractor is, uh, it's, a, it's a general contractor agent and can help around the house. And here in the prompt, we're saying, talk like a general contractor and you really, really like yellow color and that's the only paint you have. And if we, let me just quickly uh, update this little uh, UI loop. So here we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to initialize things with our username. We're going to start with the info agent. And in the, in the loop, we're doing the same thing. We're just sending input. And, and here we're printing out what tools have been called so far. And I'm printing out the, the session state as well. So uh, let's just clear this and, and run this again. So, and, and as before, I can, you know, say, say, change my username to Chris. Okay. And then like, and then I'm going to say, I need to paint my house. And you see, uh, yeah. So like tools called so far, it actually transferred us to the general contractor. So, but basically what happens, uh, when a prompt is get invoked uh, invoked as a tool it's gonna go grab the preamble in our current chat session and replace it with whatever this prompt provides so and, and this prompt basically get, replaces the system prompt with these instructions and new tools so and, and here we actually you know it says tools info agent so we, we can in theory just you know transfer back to the uh, to the uh, info agent in, in here as well uh, but uh, this is kind of shows you that this is a, you know, very basic example, but th this is how you build multi-agent uh, systems. Each of these uh, agents are specialized so that they have specific instructions, a specific set of tools that they can utilize and keep it, keeping them smaller, th they will make less mistakes and you can provide more specific instructions and, and then you, you can transfer between them depending on the, on your workflow and, they would perform better than if you just put everything into one big agent with all these different instructions. So yeah, this is kind of the high level overview of uh, these new features with Jenkins 0.9. Please do check them out and, and let us know what you think. Uh, 
Thanks. <laughs>